Hi there. Terrorism has arguably been one of the defining factors of our time. It frequently makes headlines with deadly attacks and spectacular attacks that often manage to reach a worldwide audience. And in some parts of the world it has been one of the most important threats to peace, security and stability. But what does that exactly mean? How high is the risk of terrorism? My name is Edwin Bakker and I'm a professor in terrorism and counterterrorism studies at Leiden University. In my research I focus on many topics related to this field, amongst others the phenomenon of foreign terrorist fighters, but also impact management after terrorist attacks, terrorism related incidents and what we call jihadist terrorism. Well, in order to give a better picture of terrorism, it is first and foremost important to talk about the phenomenon itself. What exactly is terrorism? Terrorism is not primarily about killing. As the expert Brian Jenkins already noted in the 1970s, the aim of terrorists is not to simply kill as many people as possible. Rather, their ultimate goal is to reach the largest possible audience, to have as many people watching as possible. Or in Brian Jenkins' words, terrorism is theater. Terrorists want to create impact on politics and society. And unfortunately, they're often successful in achieving that. But the ultimate aim is to achieve certain political goals. Well, fortunately, most terrorists are not successful in achieving, for instance, changing the power structure of a country, or secession or independence of a certain region, or establishing a utopian state based on their ideology. So now that we have a basic understanding of terrorism, the next question is, how threatening is it? What is the risk that you might become the victim of a terrorist attack? Well, terrorism is one of the most prevalent risks in public perception. When a terrorist attack occurs, it immediately makes headlines and often horrific images quickly reach an audience all around the world through newspapers, television, but most of all by way of social media. Moreover, it often leads to immediate actions, measures and laws by governments, including declaring a state of emergency and airstrikes against a terrorist group as was the case after the attacks in Paris in November 2015. And oftentimes, unfortunately, this increases the impact of the terrorist attack itself. In general, extreme events such as terrorist attacks can have a tremendous effect on our perception of risk. And this is especially true in risk-averse societies in the West, where even small attacks receive a great deal of attention. And in these risk-averse societies, terrorism is among one of the most important risks which people are concerned about. For example, if we look at Europe, we see that terrorism, according to the Eurobarometer opinion poll, was considered one of the two most important issues facing the EU in 2015 and 2016. And this came after the Paris attacks in the years before and the attacks in Brussels and Nice. Well, add to that the worries over the rise of the so-called Islamic State in Syria and Iraq in 2014, and worries over the phenomenon of European jihadist fighters in these two countries on the side of IS and other terrorist groups. Well, this has led to the perception of an unprecedented wave of terror, a threat that is worse than ever before and which calls for drastic measures. But how severe is this risk? Is our perception in line with the facts? Well, while in some countries terrorists strike almost every day, in many parts of the world terrorist attacks are, fortunately, a rare event. If we look at the figures, the chance that European citizens will become a direct victim of a terrorist attack is extremely low. In the West, and in fact most other parts of the world, you have a much higher chance to be struck by lightning than by terrorism. Moreover, while terrorism seems to be more and more prevalent in public perception, it is not new, nor is it a bigger risk than ever before, 
at least not in the West. Modern terrorism actually already started in the late 1960s in the West. And in the 1970s to the 1990s, there were far more fatalities than in the past decade. In those days, the 1970s to the 1990s, Europe was confronted with several hundred to up to a thousand incidents each year, in which around 200 to more than 400 people were killed each year. And to put these figures into perspective, in the past decade, the total number of incidents ranged from less than 200 to less than 400. And more importantly, the number of fatalities from zero or less than 10 to more than 150 in 2015. And it's important to note that compared to, for instance, Sub-Saharan Africa, North Africa, the Middle East, South Asia, Western Europe is very safe from terrorism. 